And so once I found these things out and I started to put, get these, these nutrients, because a foundational question and, and, and this answer for everybody is if you are experiencing damage to a particular tissue, a simple question is what is a tissue made of, right? What is it made of? Because you have to supply your body with the raw materials to build that thing. And our bodies are amazing. They could do a patchwork job on you. But once you give your body the ideal things, your body's so intelligent, it will, it, will, it will preferentially choose the right stuff. And so I start to flood my body. Initially, I became a natural pill popper, to be honest. Like I was like, oh, this nutrient, very expensive on a college budget and also not sustainable. It wasn't that it's lacking in intelligence, a layer of intelligence there with these synthetic isolated nutrients versus the real foods that they're found in with all these biopotentiators and all these other nutrients that in my nutritional science class, I was not taught about that stuff. I was taught to tell patients, make sure you get plenty of vitamin C. What kind? There's multiple forms of vitamin C. There's multiple forms of vitamin Don't A. Don't you just love that vitamin C is supposedly the hot, like everybody thinks, oh, orange juice, but it's higher in like kiwis and strawberries and other things like that are, you know, seemingly, to, you know, that are more healthy than drinking a glass of orange juice. That's because of marketing. You know this, you know, marketing, was telling us get your drink your OJ your get your Sunny D barely is really orange juice <laughs> that I don't even know what I don't even till this day I think it's Tang I really do you ever remember Tang I of love course tang. when I was a tang kid I had, had that Tang, tang. <laughs> mm. in the commercials it was I think it was like some lips it was just like some <laughs> lips with the legs and it's just like yeah but I mean the ingredients on there are in it's pure insanity you know yeah. some of the stuff has actually been a couple of ingredients in Tang are, are not no longer in use because they've been banned. Yeah. Um, but so I, what I did was I shifted to, to the, to the real foods and just start to flood my body with these nutrients. And the third thing was, if you're not sleeping well, you're not healing well. Yeah. My biggest struggle over those two years was sleeping at night. Yeah. I was in so much pain and the things that I was doing during the day ended up helping me to sleep better at night. And once I could start to sleep and I'm providing my body with these building, these very essential critical building blocks. And the movement, because I came across a study, on, it was actually on racehorses. And this is a multi-billion dollar uh, entity as well. And racehorse might be worth I mean, tens of millions of dollars. And if they break a leg, that can be a major thing. So they did this study. And their find sperm. Out how Between the horse and their sperm, they're worth a lot. <laughs> right. It's a very, I mean, stud shout fees. out to- Every guy in the world's like, man, I want a stud fee. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the what is it called the 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 what is the derby the triple crown shout out to the triple crown but you know they wanted to increase the bone density of these horses so they had a control group and then they had a a study group where they gave the horses basically what i was doing supplementation increased nutrition to increase their bone density and it did improve their bone density but they had another study group of horses that they gave nutri nutrition to and walked the horses and they had an even higher increase in their bone density. And this speaks to what movement is really for. Unfortunately, we, we've, de we've devolved from an understanding of what movement is about, which this concept of going and exercising, which I love, is a new invention. We never had that as a, as a species throughout our evolution because movement was just life. We just lifted heavy stuff. We, we, we moved around. We had yeah. plenty of of walking and foraging and all these different yeah. things. Now That's today we're trying to replicate. That's true. Like you were just a farmer, or you built things, or you know there was no. It wasn't like you'd purposely walk into a box where there was like bars hanging and things on the wall to throw and dumbbells and yeah, that's totally true. Never thought about that. Yeah, it, it's it's so interesting because and this leads into what does this mean for us? What did that movement that our genes expect us to move our DNA? expects us to move is a part of being human. And so what this movement is, if you think about the word exercise, it's very close to the word exorcise, by the way, which kind of means to expel things, to get things out of the environment. And a big part of exercise that we have now mountains of peer-reviewed evidence on is elimination, right? This quote, detoxification, uh, supporting mechanisms through exercise and through movement. But another big part of exercise is assimilation. And being able to actually absorb all the, the good stuff that you're eating, if you're changing your nutrition, you're not getting the full benefit unless you're moving your body. That's what exercise is really about, assimilation 
digestion and also elimination, such a powerful supportive force in those things. So bottom line, um, about two weeks from that day of making that decision, I was already feeling incredibly better, but it was six weeks later that I realized that the pain I've been experiencing every day in my life for those two years that had me terrified, it was gone. Now, I, I, wanna, I wanna make this clear. I was so afraid that it would come back. I was just, I was actually terrified because it's just like, what is, what if I make a wrong step? I don't know what happened. I was, I was so used to having the pain. I was looking for the pain and it was oh, there sure. all of a sudden. Neuroplasticity was, you know, had happened and needs to happen again. You learned how to, you learned how to be worried about pain and now you have to learn how to not worry about it. Exactly. That is exactly right. And during that period, people start to come up to me at the university that I worked at. I mean, I didn't work there yet, that I was going to school at and teachers. So professors would come up to me and uh, fellow students, faculty members. These just started to be like, it was like a magnetic thing. They was coming up and they were like, what did you do? You look so healthy. Like, like it was a problem because I looked, yeah. I looked like a, a complete ghost. <laughs> Are you on drugs? That. And you're like, actually, I'm off of them. <laughs> and so they're coming up and asking me. And then they would ask me if I can help them. And so these start to become like the first clients that I was working with as I was working on my degree. And I got a scan of my sp uh, spine done about, it took, it was nine months later. And I was still, I was scared. I didn't need to get that affirmation, but I kind of did. I wanted to see for myself. And I saw the last physician that I'd worked with and he put the MRI out for me and my, my two herniated discs, L4 and L5 S1, they had retracted on their own. And my degeneration had reversed essentially. And I could see the light shining through my disc again. They look like healthy disc. Whereas, you know, my first physician had said that I had the spine of an 80 year old. And now here I was. And, you know, at the time he was, he asked me what I did. And I told him like, you know, I'm at the time, at the time I didn't have the vocabulary and I was so overjoyed with this experience that and everybody out there who's who knows about health and is passionate about health, they probably have this experience that you just start saying all this stuff and people just don't, they're not even getting it it's so over their head. I'm like, I'm I'm exercising and I'm i do you know about you know these quote superfoods and all these different things in it? He's just like, okay, yeah, yeah. But he's like, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Instead of really he's seeing the my MRI, instead of him really inquiring, what did you do? to get these results so I can replicate this in other patients. That's what he said to me. And I left there. He asked you, he did ask you or he didn't. Yeah, he, he did. did, but it was just kind of awesome. like a formality. He wasn't, he didn't really, the answer that I gave him didn't fit the paradigm that he was expecting. Yeah. Like I, I guess yeah. he thought maybe I took some experimental new drug. I don't know, but I didn't give him the, the answer that he wanted. And uh, this is the, the cherry on top of story from that moment. You know, I, I was already working with people, but I, you know, I graduated, got my degree. I was already a strength and conditioning coach uh, at that point. I really went intense in that. I shifted all my coursework back to biology and kinesiology and nutritional science, opened my clinical practice as a nutritionist, worked with thousands of people in a one-on-one -on -one context and also just small workshops and things like that. And saw, you know, I've got people coming in 400, their blood sugar is like 400, you know, they're on metformin, insulin people mm. on, you know, lisinopril for heart disease and hypertension and, you know, folks who are diagnosed with cancer and all these different things and seeing so much success. A lot of those stories were people who they've, they've been told the same thing. There's nothing you can do about this. And the number one thing that I would do. And so, for example, we had about an 80% uh, success rate with folks coming in who are diagnosed with type two diabetes to normalize their blood sugar without medication, working with their, along with their physician, oftentimes within a matter of weeks, you know, and what the number one thing that we did, I literally would just take the time. I would allot the time to sit down with them. I had this, this board, you know, this uh, whiteboard, and I would walk them through kind of reverse engineer the disease. Like, okay, so you're diagnosed with diabetes. Here's how it works. Here's your pancreas. These are alpha cells. These are beta cells. And I would take them through the process and I could see the light come on in their eyes. Like they're literally like waking up in, in that moment. Like I had no idea what was happening in my own body. <laughs>